As much as I love the sound of suck, squeeze, bang, and blow, I have to admit, none of her cars suited for it. In the 1950s, Rolls-Royce produced a car that was so well engineered that the loudest thing you could hear at 60 miles an hour was the ticking of the clock. See what I mean? Hey guys, Stipe here with a controversial list of cars that should come back as EVs, much like how the Hummer did. And guess what? You can now win one. Omaze, sponsor of today's video, is giving you a chance to drive away in a true behemoth of a car world. The sold out in 10 minutes Hummer EV Edition 1. Edition 1. one. This top of the line luxury tank comes jam packed with features. It's got autopilot, it's got big screens, detachable roof panels, four wheel drive, 1000 all American horsepower, and something called the Watts to Freedom mode. Engage that and you'll be blown past many supercars on your way to 60. And when you get tired of the paved road, the Hum EV will happily go where no other truck had gone before. With big chunky tires, huge ground clearance, underbody cameras, and underbody steel armor, you'll be easily conquering any mountain. There's also something called the Crab Walk that allows you to drive or even park diagonally. It's quite the package. So for your chance to win an all-electric Hummer EV Edition 1, go to omaze.com slash topcarstv and enter. Plus, you can support the amazing work of the Rebuilding Together organization dedicated to repairing homes, revitalizing communities, and rebuilding lives. And they say that Hummer owners are a bunch of Remember the old days of big cars with big fins? Oh, I remember! Those gigantic yachts on wheels, ornated with chrome and colorful leather interiors, were some of the most expensive and most opulent rolling sculptures in the world, rivaling even the best that Rolls had to offer. Among this crowd, one car stood head and shoulders above the rest, a car for the creme de la creme of the 20th century, the Hollywood's favorite, Cadillac El Dorado. But what about today? Where's the 2020 model? After decades of sleep-inducing models, followed by a period of what I like to call mad cads, it seems that Cadillac has completely lost the plot. You were Roll's rival. Act like it. And what better way to do so than by bringing the big old LD back and back as an EV. Take that cushy CL concept car from 10 years ago, fill it up with batteries for the longest range possible, and give it around 550 electric horses. Anything more and it'd be like listening to Beethoven at 200 decibels. Not a very enjoyable experience. Classy is the name of the game here. Linear power delivery, silky smooth torque, and of course, the silent serenity. Why spend millions researching the sound dampening materials when getting rid of the cylinders does the trick too? So yeah, an Ev Dorado. It would totally make sense. Which is not something I would say about electric muscle cars, and yet, here I am, putting the GNX on the list. Hey, I told you it was going to be a controversial one, but the GNX was a controversial car too, so it's only fitting. For those who don't know, the Grand National Experimental was something of a black sheep among the American muscle. And I do mean black, there were no other color options. Furthermore, unlike almost every other muscle car before it, the brick-shaped Buick didn't come with some big block, big power V8. No, it had a V6 only, but with a chunky turbo stuck to it. That turns out was good for 300 horses and a quarter mile in low 13s. Down the drag strip, this was the fastest car you could buy in 80s America. That includes the supercars too, like this Callaway-tuned Corvette or this V12 Royalty from Italy. Does that remind you of something? Look, I'm not a big fan of muscle cars going electric. I see how Dodge is trying hard to capture the spirit of these brutes with the newly announced Daytona, but it still feels wrong. However, with the GNX being a different kind of muscle, the one that used new ways to produce power, I'd give it a pass. I would. Imagine a P100D, but shaped like a pile of bricks. And there you have it. Now go out there and anger some old schoolboys once more. Speaking of old, the 1981 DeLorean DMC-12, probably the most famous and most beloved movie car ever. I love it, you love it, everyone loves the DeLorean. 
despite the fact that it was an absolutely awful car. It was a sports car that handled like it was missing one wheel, and I'm not talking about the spare one. Plus, the engine was weaker than the Belgian military. But thanks to a certain Spielberg movie, this wedge-shaped car made of exposed stainless steel with gullwing doors and rear window blinds became so iconic and recognizable that if they continued production today, people would still go for it. And so they should. Just make sure that it's electric. That would suit its retro-futuristic vibes as well as fix the power issue. Now, I know that there is actually new DeLorean EV, but they missed it by a mile. This isn't it. You had the most iconic shape ever, and then you come up with this bag of boredom? Yes, it has gullwing doors and rear blinds, but other cars have that too, and that alone doesn't make them DeLoreans. How hard is it to put a Tesla motor in the 80s design, make all the buttons do those R2-D2 sounds, and call it a day? I mean, how hard can it be? Meanwhile, Hyundai does this concept car, and everyone goes nuts over it. I wonder why. Hmm. Another car that relied heavily on nostalgia is the BMW Z8. This spiritual successor to the 507 from the 50s was a gorgeous blimp of perfection in BMW's history. And looking at what they're selling today, they sure could use something gorgeous again. So why not bring the Z8 back? Make it a limited production, charge way too much for it, doesn't matter. As long as it looks mostly like the old one, people would still go for it. See what I mean? I wouldn't even mind if it was electric either. The Z8 was never a Ferrari rival. It was more of a composed GT cruiser than something you'd harass by stomping on the gas pedal. Think James Bond, not James Humphrey. Such ZV8 would be a tuxedo that you drive, so it's only fitting to do away with all the noise and exhaust fumes too. Another reason I'd give it a pass is Hans Zimmer. Who? If you haven't heard of him, you've surely heard of his work in some of the biggest Hollywood blockbusters. But not just that, he also did the artificial sound for electric beamers. Have a listen. There is sort of a grit to it. It's futuristic, but kind of dirty too. I like it. And hey, if anyone can make EVs sound enjoyable, an Oscar-winning composer is your best bet. Sticking with beautiful cars, Jaguars. No matter if they do race cars or road cars or supercars, you can always count on them to be prettier than your girlfriend. Look at the XJ220. Even when they were gunning for the top speed record, the performance didn't interfere with the design. It remained poised and elegant, which is not something I can say about most modern speed machines. They're so full of holes and blades that if you run your hand across them, you'll lose a finger. And for what? for 13% more downforce or whatever other marketing numbers they care about, maybe it's time to take a step back and design cars that are good on the eyes instead of just the spreadsheets. Cars like the Jaguar Vision GT. Although just a concept for the Gran Turismo game, this isn't some wishy-washy fantasy car. The 1,000 horsepower electric powertrain comes from Jaguar's Formula E racer. And as for the rest of it, it's nothing unheard of. Origami wing like the Porsche Panamera, canopy door like the Probe 16, and lots of carbon fiber like everything else that's fast these days. So if you ever wonder what the successor to the old XJ220 would look like, this is it. Low, wide, long, elegantly gorgeous from every angle, and hey, electric too. I doubt they'd be able to pull off such a shape if they had a classic drivetrain, and if that's the case, I'd be okay with it. What can I say? a sucker for beautiful cars. And now something entirely different, a pickup truck. Although there are some sports trucks that jump over dunes and stuff and even luxury ones with ambient lights, most of these vehicles are for getting work done. And when it comes to that, nothing beats electricity. Think about it. When was the last time you used a drill that was powered by gas? Bring on the Besides, the electric supremacy in trucks was already proven by Ford and Rivian. Thanks to a massive amount of torque, these two have enough grunt to pull cargo trains if needed. Sadly, they're expensive, and therein lies a chance for Dodge. Imagine an affordable, no-nonsense, all-work, blue-collar Ram EV. Forget about touchscreens and iPlay connectivity and the other fluff. Just give it as much torque as possible, all kinds of plugs for your tools, and to top it off, an onboard generator too. For, you know, in case you run out of juice. That would sell like crazy. 
Finally, Dodge should drop it like they used to. In their old ads, to just show how tough Rams were, Dodge was nonchalantly dropping them from the ceiling. No CGI or empty stunt shells. No, these were the real deal, and they dropped them like they were hot. Imagine that they did that in front of a live audience, Apple event style. Dodge would have broken the internet. And now, this. I know that wishing for the next GTR to be electric is akin to a deadly sin, but hear me out. When the current generation came out, it flipped the supercar world on its head. This computer on wheels was many times cheaper than your Fezzies or Lambs or McLarys, but it would still outdrag and outcorner them any day of the week, despite being heavier than the lot. But that was 15 years ago, and although GTR did get more power and more handling, the rivals eventually caught up to it and overtook it too. Meanwhile, another supercar slayer showed up, the Tesla Model S. Like Nissan before, this new four-door computer on wheels was also embarrassing fast stuff down the drag strip. It wasn't very good around the track due to its weight and simply not being tuned for such use, but its straight-line speed was hard to ignore. Now, imagine the new GTR had such a powertrain. Plus, thanks to the expertise of Nissan racing engineers, it could blitz the corners too. This idea isn't so far-fetched as you think. Nissan was the first manufacturer to mass-produce an electric car, the LEAF. It actually precedes the Model S, which means that by now, they have years of experience with the technology. Then they made the LEAF RC, the first electric race car. The next logical step would be to put all this electric know-how into a GTR and unleash it on the new crop of automotive exotica. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I guess a hybrid would work too. Anyway, that's it for me today. See you in the next one.